With this video, I just wanted to provide some context for our IEP student and then where our students are prior knowledge wise. So our IEP student is deaf. He's very academically sound. There is no academic issue whatsoever. It's just during Zoom and in class, he has to have multiple screens on for Zoom. So he could be looking at a different screen as he has a translator, which is a paraprofessional. And she translates everything I say or the other teacher says so the student can understand it. He also understands male voices better, I guess because of the how deep our voices are. Um, so typically he doesn't struggle when I'm speaking. Um, so prior student knowledge, my students are very comfortable in no number sense and how to simplify fractions. My students can solve problems about multiplying fractions with little difficulty. Um, some skills our students are still working towards are multiplying a fraction by a whole number and then converting an improper fraction to a mixed number. We know all this by pre-assessment and through other units where students have shown exemplary level of understanding. And so some errors or faulty thinking that may occur during this lesson is miscalculations or in like problem solving or multiplication and then simplification. So students may struggle simplifying uh, mixed numbers and improper fractions. So the problem that we're gonna be looking at that I'll model with you guys is at the top of page 89, and it's about Farmer Diaz. So Farmer Diaz has three acres of land, and he plows one-fifth of this land. So based on what that says, guys, what type of problem do we think this is? Yep, Claire, this is a multiplication problem. Yep, so we're gonna be multiplying the fraction one-fifth by three, the whole number. The diagram the example uses is an area model. And with the area model, uh, Farmer Diaz's land is divided vertically into three acres. So that would be the three boxes right here. And the dashed horizontal segments divided the land into five parts. And the shaded strip is one-fifth of the, the land. example breaks the acres into three columns right here. And then five parts, which why is it five parts? Yep, Cameron, it's because of the five is in the denominator. And so five, if the five was in the numerator, it would be one whole acre. So it takes five pieces of one acre to equal an acre. So, but we're only gonna highlight or shade one of each acre, which if we add those up is one, two, three fifths of an acre. And the example solves the problem by taking one fifth of the three acres being the same as taking one fifth of each acre and combining them. And so they showed this by setting up their problem, one fifth times three equals one fifth and the three has been broken down into one, just like the diagram, so it's one acre in each. And so what they did was use distributive properties to distribute the one fifth to each one. And then anytime you multiply a value by one, it just equals itself. So the one fifth times one, one fifth times one, one fifth times one is just one fifth three times. And then that gives you one fifth plus one fifth one plus one fifth, which gives us our answer, which is three but fifths. What is another way we could have done this? Right, we could have found a common denominator. And so over here, if we're doing one fifth times three, what would be the denominator for three? Right, yep, Sophia, it would be one. And so our problem setup should look like this, one-fifth times three over one. And what would we do to find the common denominator, which is the first step? Yep, we would multiply each side by five to find the common denominator. And so we carry over our one-fifth, and then after multiplying one and three, by five, we get 15 over five. And then the next is we, we multiply 
across. And so we do 1 times 15, which anytime we multiply 1 by a number, it just gives it 15, or itself. And then we do 5 times 5, which equals 25. And is this answer acceptable? It is the right answer, yes, but we need to put it in simplest form. So what would we do is divide it, divide it by the greatest common factor, which in this case is 5, so we'll divide each side, so 15 divided by 5 and 25 divided by 5, which gives us once again 3 fifths. Any questions about that process? Nope, so now we've shown multiple ways of finding the solution by doing two different strategies. So now that I've modeled one problem by myself, I want us to do one together. And so number one, or the next problem, is Farmer Smith has four acres of land. She plows one third of her land. Divide and shade the drawings at the right to show the part of the land she plows. And so guys, the setup for this problem is the same exact as last time. It's even about acres and about land. And so the first thing we need to do is find our values. And so we know it's four acres and we know they do a third. So they've already divided it into four different acres, which is the same as last time. And so what we need to figure out is how many lines go in each or how many boxes make one full acre. And for this problem, it's a third. So we should divide each box or each acre into three different parts. And since we're taking a third of each acre, we'll shade one third of the boxes which gives us one third plus one third plus one third plus one third, which is four thirds. Now, how would we express this problem as a unit fraction, as a sum of unit fractions? So we would write it up with one third and the denominator for four would be what? Yep, it would be one because anytime it's a whole number, you just put one underneath it. And so what area does Farmer Smith plow? Yep, it would be four-thirds, which what would that be simplified? Yep, that would be one and one-third. So you would just carry over the one, uh, the three-thirds, which you already have one, and then you would have one left over. So you would have one whole acre and a third of another plowed. So now we're gonna do more practice of multiplying by a non-unit fraction. And so since we've already learned how to solve, or we have the skills and the strategy set to solve, we are gonna incorporate number lines, which is another type of graph. But the first thing we have to do, like the other problems, is solve it. And what's the first step for solving A? So we need to write out our problem, 1, 7 times, since 2 is a whole number, what's the denominator? Yep, it would be 2 over 1. And then what's the next step? We find the common denominator, which for this one, it would be 7. So we multiply each, the denominator and numerator by 7 to give us our common denominator, which would give us 1 seventh times 14 sevenths. So now we can combine our values. So it would be, we would cross multiply. So one times 14 equals 14, and then seven times seven, which equals 49. But that's not it. What do we need to do now? Right, we need to simplify. And what is the thing we use to simplify? Yep, we use our greatest common factor. And so we'll divide, which in this problem would be 7. So we divide 14 by 7, which would give us 2, and then 49 by 7, which would give us 7. So our answer to this problem is 2 sevenths. But now we need to find it on the number line. And so just like the area model, all we're doing is putting a single jump on the numbers. And so what do you notice about the number line? It's separated into seven values, which equals a whole. 
So the denominator is always going to be how many numbers are on. And so for this, like the area model, we're just going to do one jump each in each of the holes since it's only two sevenths. So we do our first jump and then our second, which will give us two sevenths if we add all that up. So now that we're in our breakout rooms together, guys, I wanted us to look at number one on the quick quiz together. And so a farmer needs to plow six acre field. She starts by plowing one fourth of the field. How many acres does the farmer plow? So what is the first thing we need to do in order to do this problem? Right, we need to set it up. And so what are our values? What type of problem is it? It is a multiplication and the first is the fraction. So one fourth times six. And so what's the first thing we need to do to this problem? We need to set it up as fractions. So since six is a whole number, we just add one as the denominator, yep. So we'll do one fourth times six over one. That's the problem. And so what's the first step in the problem? Right, we need to find the common denominator. And for that, we're just gonna multiply each side by four since four is the denominator on the other fraction. And so we do six times four and one times four, and we combine those values to give us 24. So one times six times four is 24, and then four times four is 16, so we do 16. So then is 24 over 16 good enough? No, we need to simplify it by finding the greatest common factor, which in this one for 24 is four, and the greatest common factor of 16 is also four. So four is the greatest common factor for these two, which gives us six over four. And is that done yet? No, we have to simplify that and convert it to a mixed number. And so six can only go into four times once. So it'd be one full acre. And then two fourths is all that's left, so it's one and two fourths of an acre. While going through this process, I had a student struggle with finding the solution and then simplifying it from an improper fraction. And then after simplifying it to an improper fraction, she had trouble converting it to a mixed number. So what I did was differentiate my instruction and modify it to meet her need. And so instead of acres, we looked at it as pizza boxes and we both drew out. So instead of acres, we drew out six pizza boxes. And instead of using plowing to a fourth of the field, we said they were eating a fourth of the slice. So we cut each box into fourths. And then we highlighted one of each, which gave us one, two, three, four, five, six slices out of six slices out of four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty four total which comes to six over 24, which if we simplify that is one fourth. One fourth of the total pizza or one whole box, one box and two extra slices, which would be one and two fourth. At this point in the lesson, we hit a point where my group had been struggling based on ability. So I needed to put in a little bit of extra work with them. While that was occurring, um, the other teacher focused on instruction and did the 
exit ticket. And in the exit ticket, all the student he asked a question. And the students just wrote out the process to find the answer and then find the answer itself. And then they moved on and uh, logged off Zoom to go to other classes. To this point, I had already modeled how to use a number line to multiply non-unit fractions and to simplify whether that's an improper fraction or converting something to a mixed number if necessary. And we worked on our we-do set together. So we were in groups and I worked with uh, my group and I, we worked through the quick quiz. And so, like I said, I didn't give them any answers, um, but it took a little bit longer for them to really understand the process. So then later we actually came back together um, during tutoring time. So there's one-on-one -on -one time and I tutored two of those students that were struggling and we actually did the extension activity together because they didn't have time to do it. Um, and so we went through, we went to that website and the students got time to practice and to use those skills that we had worked today and to continue furthering that knowledge.